SIU and Evansville began over 70 seasons ago. In that first meeting, SIU lost a football type scoring event 21 to 18. But remarkably, over those 70 plus seasons, SIU and Evansville are deadlocked with 43 victories apiece. Tonight, SIU can guarantee a regular season series sweep with the victory tonight. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mark. The Evansville Aces are just being introduced, but let's start the starting lineups tonight with the visitors from SIU. The Salukis come into the game with a record of five and three, 11 and eight overall under second year head coach Bruce Weber. And this is how they will line up tonight on the basketball court. Starting at the guard positions will be Brandon Mells and Ricky Collum. At the forward positions will be Chris Tennell and Kent Williams. And the center will be Derek Tillman. Tillman had 14 points against this ball club the last time out. Kent Williams had 20 against the Evansville Aces. The homestanding Aces will go this way tonight starting in their lineup. It'll be Jeremy Stanton at the guard position along with Adam Seitz. Craig Snow and Clint Keown will be at the forward positions, although Keown is more of a three guard. And then Kwame James will start in the center. Kwame James, the last time these two teams played, had zero points in about 12 minutes, could not do anything, was coming off an injury at the time, did not play well, so was not much of a factor as Josh Cross was coming off of an injury last time that Southern played as we get a good look at Bruce Weber. And Matt, Josh Cross could be a big difference maker in this one tonight. You pointed out early, Mike, his bench scoring over the last five games, he scored just over 10 points. He could be a key tonight. He's added a lot of pep to the lineup. Let's see if he can get SIU that spark. Evansville in their white t-shirts. Southern in their road maroon with the black and white trim. It's Williams being hounded by Seitz. Evansville chose to go to a quicker lineup with Keon instead of Kyle Runyon. Brandon Mel starts things off for the Salukis with a three. Brandon shooting threes at a 43% clip. Nice to see him get off to an early start, especially in the scoring column. He's been looking to score a lot more the last couple ball games. So now right off the bat, gets called for a foul on the inside. And Southern with an early three to nothing lead. Southern starts in its man defense. Williams guarding Keown. Tough matchup for uh, Tillman guarding Snell. Interesting matchup for Derek. He'll go out high with him when he gets it, the ball out on top, looking for the jump shot. There's Snow, and he knocks it down. Snow was three for 13 shooting in the first game. We don't anticipate that happening again. Williams went off for 20 the first game. Knocked out of bounds by Derek Tillman, and Evansville will keep possession. Southern leads it early, 3-2, just underway. 18.57 left to go in the first half. Little change up on the offensive end right there. He tried to take it to the hole. Passed up on the outside shot. And I think we're going to see more of that going deep inside with Williams driving. Maybe getting the ball down low to Tillman or Tunnell. Jeremy Stanton against Brandon Mills. That's a walk by Adam Seitz. First turnover of the ball game. Mike, you mentioned at the top, the starting lineups. Keon getting the start tonight. Evansville's playing with a little smaller, quicker lineup to try and combat against SIU's smaller, quicker lineup that they, that they uh, bring to the floor. We'll see what happens in, when Cross and Schroeder come into the game for SIU, how Evansville chooses to match up. Column traveled, but no call was made. Pass inside, and Craig Snow's going to be called first foul. And he didn't like that one at all, but he and Tillman were battling pretty hard inside. And Derek won that battle. Bruce Weber calls out play number six. We'll see what unfolds here on the inbound underneath the basket. And Evansville's in his zone right now, Mike. To the corner, and it's Ricky Collin. Southern coming off a 76-48 win against Drake. Tennell misses badly. And Tillman gets the rebound, but credit Kent Williams with keeping that one alive in Southern Leeds 5-2. Good hustle by Williams, good hustle by, Tine by Tillman, and also it was a good look when he got Tennell open at the top of the key. It's gonna be a foul on Kwame James, elbowing Chris Tennell. And they're calling it tight on the inside early in this one. 
Salukis, here's the uh, replay of it now. And there's the elbow right there. Chris's head went flying back. Hard to get away with that when it's right in front of the referee. Mel's bounce pass down to Tillman in the corner. Fadeaway shot, no. Rebound, Kent Williams, no. Tunnell has to get rid of it. No, tip in by Derek Tillman and Southern controlling the offensive boards early in this one. You know, a lot of times, Mike, when you score big against a team one time, you can come back, you have that confidence already going into the game, and I think Tillman has that. He's looking to go strong to the boards and put it up for a couple baskets. Stanton on the wing. Snow missed that one badly, and Southern brings it up, leading 7-2. Good defense. It's a nice start for the Salukis. Good defense by SIU on that last one, not to jump in. They stood their ground underneath the basket. Mills misses. Sites just hammered Kent Williams out of bounds, no call. And here's the substitutions you were talking about, Matt. Schroeder and Cross into the game for Tunnell and Kent Williams. So it presents a different look, a little taller, a little more athletic look underneath for the dogs with Cross in there. And Schroeder gives Southern a slashing game now in there as Williams is more of a pull-up jumper. Evansville head coach Jim Cruz chooses not to counter. He's going to leave his same starting lineup out there. We'll see how that matchup goes here the rest of the first half. Sites. Shot clock down to 12. Yeah, there's a foul on Abel. Did bump him. Southern's defense looks very good early. Tough call on Abel right there. He's trying to stay with his man. A little hand check. Referee called it. Evansville making some changes now. Chuck Hetty comes in. So does Farouk Mayuzinovic. And Kyle Runyon comes in. So they answer Southern's substitutions. And now Kent Williams is going to come right back in for the Salukis for Ricky Collum. Here's the drive there and the foul on Schroeder. It was on the floor, though, and Evansville will inbound it underneath, and we got a foul against Kyle Runyon. Just into the game, that's the third team foul on the Aces in this one. It's seven to two, Southern leads it. There's Coach Bruce Weber right in front of Abel Schroeder. Evansville in its man defense. Keown gets the job of guarding Kent Williams. Southern ran its motion offense to perfection against Drake the other night with a couple of players in double figures and three or four more with nine points. Schroeder slashes in, nowhere to go. It's got to be a charge, and it is. Schroeder was one of those players with nine points. A little out of control as he drove to the basket. He's got two fouls already. He's only been in the game 20 seconds. That can't happen for Abel. He had nowhere to go at the top of the key. He passed up what looked like an easy jumper. He's been going to the basket strong in the last few ball games, and that's what he's looking to do right there. Unfortunately, that time he got caught with the charge. Abel, a 6'4 junior out of Oakville. Still 7-2. Evansville has two points from Snow, and that's it. Hetty has it knocked away by Ricky Collum. Stanton quick with his feet. Turn column three times. Schroeder with the top of the key. 18 on the shot clock. Williams gets Keown in the air and hits the jump shot. 9-2, just ahead of immediate timeout. Nice to see Kent get off early. 20 points against him last time. Eddie on the wing. Fifteen on the shot clock. Muyazinovic out high, now back to Keown. Inside to Hetty, turn around, yes. That's what Hetty will do, get the ball down low, turn it, that little turnaround J that he likes to take. He shoots from the floor, 56%. So he is a scorer and he can put the ball in the basket, averaging just over six points a game. Evansville prefers a quicker pace than what this game has started out with. Nice pass, what a pass. Tillman gets the jam on the perfect feed from Schroeder. Derek Tillman has six points early in this one. Stanton. Stolen. Here comes Cross and Williams. Good pass. 
Kent to the hoop, scores. Great way to use the bounce pass by Josh Cross to get it to the open Kent Williams. Drive to the basket, easy layup. Two. Lukies lead by nine, 13 to four. Evansville has not had an easy shot in this game. Keown, top of the key. Twelve on the shot clock. Hand check and Schroeder's got three now. Abel's done for the rest of the half, I think. Yeah, but I think they're going to sit him down. They had some. Tunnell was going to come back in the ball game already. Unfortunately, he got the foul right ahead of the media timeout. A great start by the Salukis. 14:05 left to go in the half. Southern leads at 13 to four. We'll be back. I'm talking, there we go. Welcome back to Robert Stadium. Mike Trude and Matt Judkins with you. Mark Carlson has something for us. Mark? Evansville hasn't been an easy place for the Salukis to play at over the years. They only had one victory here in the 1990s. That was in the 93-94 season. And an even more amazing fact is they've only had four victories here in Evansville since the 1970-71 season. And right now these Purple Aces are in the midst of a 14-game home win streak that dates back all the way to last year, January 20th, 1999. Back to you. Thank you, Mark. And as we mentioned earlier, this the series is tied 43 to 43 between these two teams. A lot of tradition. Southern gets the turnover as Muzinovich loses it and Mel's what? Deerman in the game got hit in the head and his contact lens popped out. He says he's okay and they stopped playing. Southern had a three on two break and Bruce Weber's not too happy with that, but that's all right. Unfortunately, yeah, they had the, they had the break. I thought Museum was might have walked when he was driving to the basket. SIU was fortunate to get the steal and the turnover. Now let's see if they can convert. Craig Snow back into the game for Muyazinovich. And Southern leading at 13 to 4. We'll start on offense here. That 13 to 4 is taking the crowd completely out of the game. Mike, when we first came on the air, we could barely hear each other. We were standing right next to each other. Tunnell drives underneath, kicks it back out to Williams. Ricky Collin for three. No. And Keon went hard to the boards that time. It's the first time Evansville's really gone hard to the boards. Thought it was a good move by Tunnell, who was right there, but he elected not to go over the back and didn't draw the foul. Keon. 20 on the shot clock. Snow. Oh, he's good. That's what Craig Snow can do to you, and he's one of those players you know he's going to get his points. Very rarely will he only get eight points in a ball game like he did against SIU the first time. 13-7 now. Southern leads it. Brandon Mills with it. Down to Jermaine Dearman on the block. Kicks it out to Tunnell for a three. Too strong. And again, it's Clint Keon with the board. Sights with it on the right wing. Nice pass to Hetty. And that's how you've got to be careful to guard the low block and not give them those easy baskets. Knocked out of bounds by Runyon. Salukis will keep it underneath. 12.39 left to go in the half. Southern leads it by four, 13 to nine. Jeremy Stanton comes in for Kyle Runyon. It's a good look at Jeremy Stanton. 6'1 junior averages six points per ball game. Brandon Mills, who started this game with a three. Short jump shot, no good. Contested heavily, and here's what Evansville likes to do, run. But they missed it. Great defense by Ricky Collin. Made him alter the shot as he went up. Threw it up too strong. Was expecting contact. Didn't get it. Bounce pass to Kent Williams. Pull up jumper. No. Rebound to Seitz. Evansville's cutting off the backside of the glass early in the ball game, and I guarantee that's what Coach Jim Cruz said to them during one of those timeouts. Let's get the backside rebound. SIU was able to get him on the offensive end early. Keown. Too strong. Offensive board by Hetty. No. I say you had good defense on him. He worked very hard to get open, and he did in the lane. Got a little turnaround jumper. 
Crowd's back into it now. They're only down by two. Williams answers with a three of his own. He's got seven, and Southern is back up by five. And that cheer you hear in the background is the SIU fans. Quite a few busloads came from Southern Illinois to root the Salukis on this afternoon here in Evansville. Keown stepped out of bounds. Did Jeremy Stanton, or excuse me, Adam Seitz. And it goes back over to the Salukis, but we've come to our second media timeout. 11.23 left to go in the first half. It's the Salukis 16, the Evansville Aces 11. More after this. With that three, and the Salukis lead it by a score of 16 to 11. They've done a nice job, even after Evansville made that little run, of coming back with the three on that play, and Evansville just turned it over again on offense. But Evansville, the last couple of possessions, has done what it likes to do, get a rebound and run. They like the, they like the fast pace. If SIU can continue to answer like Kent Williams did, They'll be able to slow that fast-paced offense transition game that Evansville likes to run. SIU's two big scores in the first game, Derek Tillman and Kent Williams off to fast starts already. Williams with seven, Tillman with six. Like to see Chris Tunnell get in the action also. He had 10 points, 13 rebounds against Evansville back at the SIU arena. Matt mentioned a couple of Carbondale uh, bus loads made their way to Evansville tonight, and they're sitting way up top, as you might imagine. They don't get good seats here at Roberts Stadium, which holds over 12,000 people, but they are here nonetheless, and they are here in force. And if Southern keeps this lead going throughout this basketball game, they'll make their uh, presence known here at Roberts Stadium. Brad Korn is in the ballgame for the Salukis as Chris Tunnell sits down. And Southern has Korn and Tillman cross Column and Kent Williams. Cross with it up high. Horn, real strong to the hoop, but couldn't get the bunny to go. They gave him the baseline. He took it. I think he went up a little tentatively when he went to the shot. Put it up a little back off the back iron. Snow is battling Josh Cross inside, and Josh is going to be called for that one. I saw them going at it. First foul on Joshua Cross, 15 foul on the Salukis. Schroeder has three already. Kwame James, that ball hit out of bounds. Interesting to see that Coach Bruce Weber has put Cross now on Snow, probably to be a little quicker so Snow can't get those quick open shots. And as we speak, he hits it. Snow's got 10. It's a two-point game. Column with it to Cross. Ricky Collins just being hounded. Joshua Cross with a 17-footer. No good. Snow travels on the play. He banged his knee hard on this Robert Stadium floor. And he was Real immediate, hard. He was in immediate pain as soon as he rolled over. Let's he just hope it's a bruise. He battled his three teammates for the rebound, and we'll watch it here. Oh, it twisted and almost hyperextended. His right knee almost hyperextended. And he's in some pain. This could be a major blow to Evansville. He's off such a fast start. He's been pretty much their offense so far with 10 points. He's okay. That is very good news. You never want to see a player go out that way. And he battled. He was battling his teammates for the rebound and just landed very awkwardly on that knee and looked like it hyperextended underneath him. And it is a traveling call and a turnover, and Southern will get the basketball. And Jim Cruz has to put somebody in. He's going to bring back Chuck Hetty into the game. And there's Evansville's trainer working on the knee. I'm not sure what he can do to it. We're back to... Uh, Live action. Tillman with it. Corn. Bounce pass to Cross. Corn. Williams alone for three. Yes! Kent Williams buries another three. He's got 10. Kent Williams likes to play against Evansville, doesn't he, Mike? Good basket. Adam Seitz took Corn to school on the baseline and got to the hoop. Williams to Corn on the wing. Yes. 
Brad stepped on the out of bounds line. He got double teamed underneath. Got double teamed. Thought there might have been a push. Referee didn't call it. Bounce the ball on the line and turnover back to Evansville. Column and Korn sit down. Tanel and Brandon Mills come back in. Here's the replay again. Watch Brad. There's his jump stop, and that's where he stepped out right there. Stepped out with his left foot, so Southern turns it back over, leading by three. 19-16. We're under 10 minutes to go here in the half. Glad you're with us from Evansville tonight. Stanton with it, 15 on the shot clock. Shot clock is down to 10. Keown inside, no good. Bounced around and finally, Brandon Mells gets control. Tanell with it on the wing. Bounce pass down to Derek Tillman. Williams feels it, short. Cross has it. Great save by Tillman. Came over right around the man, tipped it right to Cross. Tanell, no. Foul from behind on Joshua Cross. But Southern is still battling hard on the boards. Second foul on Cross. Sixth team foul on the Salukis. Here's the replay again. Watch Josh right there over the back, hitting the arm of Clint Keown. You like to see the hustle, Mike, but you got to be a little more careful, especially when you're offensive end of the, the floor and you don't have position underneath the basket. Evansville can tie it with a three. Ricky Collum getting set to check back in for the dogs. Keown. They don't have that one player they can go to when Snow's not in the ball game. They're all looking for somebody else to shoot right now, Mike. There's a goaltending call on Derek Tillman. Stanton will get the layup. Once it hits the backboard, you cannot go get it. Craig Snow is not back in the game yet. Kyle Runyon's coming in, as is Mayuzinovich. And I believe Snow went back to the locker room. So it's 19-18, SIU leads by one. They led by nine earlier, 13 to four. So it's been a nice 15 to five run by the Aces to get back in the game. Williams with it, nice move in the lane to Tillman. Foul from behind. Chuck Hetty's gonna be called for that personal foul and Derek Tillman gets to go to the free throw line and shoot a couple of tosses. A nice dish there by Kent Williams. And there was the hammer. Williams had his, had his head up and. So Derek Tillman at the free throw line will shoot two. 65% or misses. On the season, Tillman has hit 52 out of 81 free throws. Brad Korn just checks back into the game for Kent Williams. Second free throw is good by Derek. And the Dogs lead it by two, 20 to 18. We could have a whole new ball game on this possession. Free throws could be a key tonight, Mike, especially with as close as the referees are calling it. We've got to convert as much as we possibly can each and every time we get to the line. Stanton all alone. Runyon, nice defense by Cross. Great denial of the basketball and all the passing lanes by SIU right now. They're not giving them any room to breathe. Shot clock down to six, no good. Three Salukis grab that rebound. Mills on the fly. Southern leads it by two, 2018. Column to Tunnell, top of the key, three, yes. Chris Tunnell, just a two. They only give Chris a two on that. First two points of the game. Southern leads it by four. Good look by Ricky to pull up. He had the drive. Also could have taken a shot, but he saw Tanel open at the top of the key. Just ahead of a media timeout, knocked out of bounds, and Evansville will keep the basketball, but they'll do so when we return. 6.57 left to go here in the first half. The Salukis lead it 22 to 18. We'll be back after this. 
Welcome back to Robert Stadium. 22-18, the score. The Salukis lead the Evansville Aces. Mark, what do you got for us? The Salukis are fresh off a pair of home victories over Bradley and Drake. Tonight is their first game in a three-game road swing here in the Missouri Valley Conference. Tonight at Evansville, then at Northern Iowa, and then at Drake. Now, all three of those games are games the SIU lost a year ago on the road. And some say those two losses at Drake and Northern Iowa may have cost the Salukis a chance at the NIT. Tonight, hopefully, they can start off on a good note and get into the Missouri Valley Conference Championship. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mark. Craig Snow is still back in the locker room. No, he's, yes, he's still back in the locker room for the Evansville Aces. He went down a few minutes ago hard on his right knee, has not returned since, Then the Salukis have a 22 to 18 lead with 6.57 to go here in the half. Sights to trigger it to Muzinovic, and he gets it to fall. He's got two, it's a two point game. Somebody left him all alone down the lane. He tried to take the charge, he didn't get a call from the referee. I don't know if it was a good no call or not. SIU still hustling down on the defensive end though. Dearman, blocked from behind, and Southern keeps it. Adam Seitz came from over the top to knock that away from Jermaine. Clean block, I don't think Jermaine was aware that there's a man behind him. No one yelled, called from behind. Williams to trigger it, gets it into Ricky Collum. To Dearman, and it's still Southern's ball as Stanton knocked it out. 15 now on the shot clock. Stanton, a 6'1 junior. You saw him there, Bruce Weber, talking it over with Matt Painter and Rodney Watson. Column with it, 10 on the shot clock. There's a foul on Adam Seitz holding Kent Williams as he came across the lane. Boy, Ken, a game in and game out, you see him get banged around so much, and I think sometimes, and you might see it here, just as he came away from the foul on sites, I think they think they can intimidate the freshman, but time there's in and time out. It there's another happen. look at it, and he was definitely held coming across uh, the free throw line area. Brad Korn came out of the game, and Brandon Mills came back in for the Salukis. Tunnell, a little bit of an elbow there against Huddy, but he traveled first. Brandon skidded on the floor. Looked like he was going to look to pass it. Got up in the air, didn't really have anywhere to go. Came back down. There's his the jump travel. stop, and his back foot just came drag, and just like nudged his front foot. And good call by the official. Turnover by the Dogs, and it's a 22-20 game. Just approaching the six-minute mark to go here in the half. Keown to the right wing and Hetty. They do look a little lost without snow on the floor. Keown. Charges, yes. Great pickup by Ricky Collum. Collum got good position down low, and I think right now, as we see here, had his feet set right into him. And I think that's what Evansville's looking to do almost every time. They're looking to get the ball down low underneath the basket. Here he is from another angle. Foul clearly on Stanton. Derek Tillman into the game. Jermaine Dearman takes his seat there, number 23, behind Coach Weber. Sits right next to Matt Painter, and he's going to get some advice from the Saluki assistant coach. It's a two-point lead for the Salukis, 22 to 20. 5.45 to go. Tunnell directs traffic at the top of the key. Lob it over Williams. Gets two guys in the air and goes to the hoop and scores. Nice light finger roll by Williams. Got on the baseline, pulled up, kept himself under control, laid it up and in. Stanton with it. Right wing to Seitz. Tillman knocks it away from Seitz. Hetty baseline, knocks it off his foot out of bounds, turns it back over to the Salukis. Good defense, and Evansville, you can see, they don't like to play this half-court game. They don't like the half-court game. It almost forces them to try and get the basket down low, especially with an outside shooter. They do have guys who aren't afraid to take the three-pointer besides Snow, but it's almost he's the man they trigger everything off of. Column with it. To Williams, top of the key. Kent obviously feeling it tonight. Tanell around Muzinovic scores. Muzinovic is a freshman. They like him, but Southern has done very well against him in the first two games. They're back up to a six-point lead. Stanton goes right around Brandon Mills and then travels with a basketball. Another turnover for the Evansville Aces. And once again, good defense by SIU. They're cutting the passing lanes off. They're getting good position. So if Evansville attempts to drive just like they did there, 
They're cut off, or they got a charge. Same basic travel as uh, Brandon Mills was. He pulled his back foot. Williams. Column. Tunnell, wide open. Nice pass to Tillman. Scores. Great recognition by Chris Tunnell. They knew they were going to come out on top of him when he was attempted to take the shot. He made two in a row. Fed it down low to Derek Tillman. Easy layup for Tillman. He's got eight now. 28-20, dogs on top. Petty, Keon is wide open. Williams covered quickly. Double team by Milyuzinovic, and Southern gets the ball as Tillman got the block. Mike, you can't play any better defense down low on the blocks. Chris Tunnell just held his ground. Look at Colum going to the hoop for an easy layup. And then that's what happens, you get the transition bucket. And Jim Cruz wants a timeout. The Salukis lead it by a score of 30 to 20. Derek Tillman had a great game the first time. They work a perfect high-low with Chris Tunnell here, and he lays it right in. That's what happens when you make shots from the outside. Chris Tunnell hit his last three-point attempt. They had to go out and collapse on him. Left Derek Tillman open wide-low. Great neck recognition by Tillman. That's two seniors working together. They've been together for a couple years. And on the very next play, Ricky Collum got a great feed from Derek Tillman and made a layup, and Southern has stretched its lead out to 10 points. It's 30 to 20. That column basket was kind of giving Evansville a taste of their own medicine. They like to get out there and fast break and run. SIU did right back to them. The next break on the floor will be the fourth and final media timeout of the half. So it'll come up very quickly on the next dead ball. 30-20 the score, 3-38 to go in the half. Southern has done most of the damage with Craig Snow out of the basketball game. Stanton, double team, and another turnover. Here comes Mills to Williams. Southern can build on its biggest lead of the game of 10 points. They led 13 to 4, but now it's 30 to 20. Been a game of runs, just like you said. They went up 13 to 4. Evansville battled its way back. Now they're up by 10. Can increase that lead to 12. Column with it. To the corner and Mills. 11 on the shot clock. Brandon with it again. 7 on the shot clock. He jacks a 3. It's blocked. Column for three, count it. And Southern leads by 13. What poise by Derek Tillman as he got the tip, could have went right up with it and rushed it. Saw Ricky Collin wide open to the three point line, fed it out to him, Ricky wide open shot, and it was good. Keown for three, way off. He didn't even draw iron on that one, Mike. Shot clock's down to 20. Stanton gets fouled on the play by Brandon Mills. And Evansville looks a little bit lost on offense, doesn't it? Here's Stanton on the drive. And Brandon clipped him on the elbow. Good call. Little touch on the hand when he was in the air. Brandon's first foul. Saluki guards have only one foul between Mel's column and Williams. And with the exception of the two, uh, two substitutes, Cross and Schroeder, SIU has really been relatively foul free in this ball game. First free throw of the half by Evansville. And that's something, too. You keep them off the line because they shoot as a team about 72%. Exactly. When you talk to the SIU coaches, one of the key things to them in this ballgame is keep the aces off the free throw line. Stanton hit them both. And we've come to our last media timeout of the half. And the Salukis are on a roll. They have their biggest lead in the basketball game. As it stands, it's Southern 33, Evansville 22. Back with the final 233 when we return after this. With Matt Judkins and Mark Carlson, I'm Mike Trude. Yes, that is a good score, and there's the layup by Ricky Collum earlier on the feed from Derek Tillman that gave Southern at the time a 10-point lead, causing Jim Cruz to call timeout. Southern eventually got it up to 13 points, and now leads it by 11, 33 to 22. Not much has gone wrong for Southern here in this half. Really, with the exception of Abel Shouters, three fouls, everything for SIU has gone right. A couple ticky-tack calls against him, but SIU's playing a really good ball game, especially on the defensive end of the floor. They're cutting off the passing lanes, and they're not allowing Evansville to get into any kind of a set offense. Bruce Weber wants to keep this lead in double digits as they head, in, head into halftime, and the Salukis need to do that in the final 233. Column with it, cross wide open, jump hook good. Joshua Cross with a nice move in the paint, and Southern leads it by 13 again. Great position by Cross down on the block. You saw him take that outside shot earlier, which really isn't his game. You get him open down low on the block like that, he'll convert. And Kwame James can't hold the basketball. Another Evansville turnover. 
13 point lead for Southern 207 left to go here in the half. Brandon Mills hounded by Stanton in the backcourt. To column on the wing. Cross. Kicks it out to Williams. Wide open from three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. He's got 15 first half points, and the dogs lead it by 16. He knew as soon as he released it from his hand, Mike. He saw the follow through. He knew he had the confidence. You can't leave Kent Williams open. He'll score every Stanton time. Stanton misses. But he gets his own rebound and puts it in. Excuse me, that was Sites on the offensive board. Williams held there, but no call. Southern leads it by 14. 38-24. And SIU be content to run a few seconds off the clock here. Look for the good shot. Hopefully get it down low like they did the last couple times. Column pull up jumper, good. Overplayed him on his right side, and Ricky went left and hit the pull up jumper. Column's got seven. The dogs lead it by 16. It's good to see everybody for SIU's getting a little piece of the action. Column with seven. pennell has got four. And another turnover for the Aces. It's got to be 10 or 11 in the first half. With if the, not more. With the exception of Evansville's last trip down the floor and the two free throws, they've turned the ball over the last six times in a row, Mike. Southern will run some clock here. Up by 16. Oh, you don't want to mess up what you've been successful with. There's the five-second call. It's just what I was talking about. Nobody moved. Nobody came out to meet him, though. And Brandon saying, that, hey, somebody's got to come get me, too. And nobody really did. Exactly. And Coach Bruce Weber pointed at him and said, Let, you know, put your head in the game. Know what's going on. It's an un unneeded turnover. Southern will get the last shot unless Evansville elects to go a two for one. Keown misses. Rebound to Joshua Cross. Southern can run out the clock. They'll have at least a 16-point lead going into halftime. And Bruce Weber calls a timeout because you lose it if you don't use it in the first half. So this is a 30-second timeout, and he's going to set up this final shot. I am so impressed with the way the dogs have played this first half. They played excellently. And you know, we just talked about Brandon Mells on that last turnover. Coach Weber pointed a couple things out of him. He came over, he gave him a little hug, and he said, get your head in the game. The, one of the senior captains, Derek Tillman, said the same thing. There's a shot of the SIU flag from the Saluki fans that are here tonight from Evansville. And they're having a great time. I remember the last time Southern won a game here, and it was a long time ago. I think Mark mentioned it was in 90 or 91. And Southern just doesn't win here in this building. As Mark said, four times in the history of Robert Stadium has Southern beaten this team. That's a lot of years and a lot of basketball games. So to be up by 16, with 30 seconds to go in the half is a big thing for the dogs. Definitely. Let's see how much patience they have. And I think they're probably going to play it for the last second shot here, Mike. Oh, they will. There's it. The shot clock in the bottom of your screen. There is a two tenths of a second differential between the two. Williams to Colin. Looking for Williams on the wing. Nice pass inside to Cross. Who scores? Cross got it down low on the block, was being defended well, but he muscled it up there into the basket, got it to go down. And what a first half of basketball by the Southern Illinois Salukis. They got out to a 13-4 lead. Evansville came all the way back, did not tie it, but trailed only by a score of 22-20, and Southern went on a 20-4 run. Let's hear what Coach Weber has to say. Mark? All right, Coach. Craig Snow went out of the ball game. It seemed to be the spark for your team just to catch fire in the first half. Well, we talked about when Fran Roy went down in the Southwest game. That's when they took over. We can't, like, get low to sleep. We, this is where you got to put it on. You can't feel sorry for him. I hope he's all right, but I want to win the game, so we got to take it at him. We talked about the first five minutes, taking it to him. We did that. We said in the middle, they had a little they had a little run, and I said, we got to finish the half, and we did that. We executed pretty well. We got it inside, but it's only 20 minutes. I don't care how many we're up. We're got to start like we're 10 down. This first half is almost a pure mirror image of the lot when you guys played Evansville at home this year. What do you guys need to do in the second half to finish them off just exactly the way well, you guys Well, we got to continue to have our heads in the game and be focused, defend them like we have, 
you know, and then we got to get inside. We can't shoot it quick, and we can't, you know, they're going to just gamble. Stan will be going for steals. We got to be strong at the ball, be patient, and then just break them down. Hopefully, we just can wear them down, and then they break. But I don't, they're a pretty mentally tough team, and Coach Cruz is a good coach. I don't think they're going to do it easily. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Thank good luck in the second Thank half. You. And we'll see if we can get an update on Craig no status, Craig's no status in the second half. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mark. Bruce Weber with some nice words about his ball club in the first half, and they lead it. They're playing very well. It's 42 24 at halftime. We'll have some features for you when we come back after this. Welcome back to Robert Stadium. 42 to 24. The Salukis lead the Evansville Aces doing so without Craig Snow, who got hurt in the first half on a rebounding play and has not been back since. It appeared that he may have hyperextended his right knee on the rebounding play. He went to the locker room. He or the trainer has not been seen since. And we don't know when he's going to come back if he does. But Southern has had a great many plays in this one. And like we'd like to show you some slow motion highlights as we go here in the first half. Derek Tillman, who has seven, nine points rather here in the first half, took a nice feed on that particular play from Ricky Collin for two. Then Kent Williams, who leads everyone with 15 points, drains a three, and he felt it this half this evening, didn't he? He sure did. And like I said earlier, as we see Chris Tennell on his three-pointer, didn't take the three-pointer. That was the feed down low to Tillman. Williams got off to a fast start, 15 points. Likes to play against Evansville, obviously. Um, his career high is 22. Let's see how he comes out the second half and see if he can go after that career high. That was another three from Kent Williams, and he's got 15 first-half points. As Matt just mentioned, he's got a career high of 22. There's some very interesting games tonight involving Missouri Valley Conference teams that will have something to do with the way the standings look tomorrow morning at this time. So let's go to our Edward Jones Missouri Valley Conference standings for tonight. Edward Jones serving individual investors since 1871. And the team that appears to be running away with it all is the Indiana State Sycamores. They are currently 7-1 and one in league play. And unless they lose a game here or there along the way, and they've got three out of their next, I think, four on the road, Indiana State might just run away and hide from people. Talking to a few people around the arena here at, in Evansville before the game, they're very impressed with Indiana State as well. They'll have a couple key matchups with those two teams coming up in a few weeks. But Evan like you said, they could run away with it very easily with a couple more wins. Evansville alone in second at six and three. There's the log jam for third. Southwest, SIU, and Bradley all at five and three. Creighton just a half game back at five and four. Northern Iowa a game and a half in seventh at four and four. And then Drake, Illinois State, and the Wichita State Shockers have yet to win a conference game this year. They are 0-8 and 5-11 and on the season. And Wichita is going nowhere real fast. And I'm, it's almost guaranteed already that they'll be playing Friday night in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. They are really struggling. Mike, as we looked at those standings with some of the teams down low, SIU's got a tough continuation of the road trip coming up. They've got to go to Iowa to play Northern Iowa and Drake coming up. It'd be great to steal a win here tonight before you head north. We talked about the first half statistics and they favor SIU very well. Let's take a look at our stats from halftime. And the, uh, the thing that really jumps out at you is that Evansville as a team is shooting 53%. Southern as a team is shooting 56 or 54%. But the key thing is Evansville has only attempted 19 shots. The Salukis have attempted 33 shots. So Southern has eight more field goals than does Evansville. And why? That bottom thing right on your screen, turnovers. Evansville has turned it over 15 times already tonight. They average just under 14 turnovers per ball game. The Salukis have only turned it over four times. Taking care of the basketball on the road is one of the main ingredients for winning basketball games. That and also distributing the ball well, Mike. You have to do that as well. SIU has 11 assists also. So they're finding the open man down low or they're finding the man out on top. When he's open, they're getting it to him and they're knocking the shots down. Individually scoring tonight, Kent Williams leads everyone with 15. Derek Tillman has nine. Ricky Collin has seven. Chris Tennell has four, as does Josh Cross. And Brandon Mills hit the game's first bucket. It was a three-pointer, and that got the Saluki started on their way to the, uh, to the big lead. For Evansville, the leading scorer is Craig Snow. He's got 10. Nobody else has more than four. Sites. 
Stanton and Petty all have four points. And uh, Farouk Mayuzinovic has a bucket for two points for Evansville's 24 points as the Salukis lead it by a score of 42 to 24. It's interesting, Evansville came back all fired up on the court, but again, we don't see Craig Snow in the lineup. And I don't believe that he's going to uh, play anymore tonight. We'll have an update on it just before we start the second half with our own Mark Carlson. But Bruce Weber mentioned that the keys to the second half were taking care of the basketball. Evansville's going to be pretty loose now because when you're trailing by 18 points, you can take some chances. So Southern really has to maintain their poise with the basketball and not duplicate Evansville's turnovers here in the second half. Be disciplined with the basketball and also be disciplined defensively not to commit those silly fouls. That's going to eventually send Evansville to the line. It'll stop the clock and I'm, give them a possibility or a chance of getting back in the game. Something SIU has to guard against. Salukis only have seven fouls overall, and three of them belong to Abel Schroeder. Two of them belong to Joshua Cross. There's a good look at the Southern contingent that came over from Carbondale uh, this afternoon. The roads from Carbondale to Evansville were all great. Uh, there were no problems with, uh, with the driving this evening. As we pulled into Evansville, it was snowing just a little bit, getting the uh, remnants of the snow that we had in Southern Illinois earlier today, but the driving was not hazardous at all. There was clean roads. There weren't any, even any salt crews or anything out on the highways because there, uh, there just wasn't anything worth, worth following. We'll get an update now on Craig Snow and his status from Mark Carlson. Mark. Mike, the latest on Craig Snow is that he will not return tonight. He has sprained knee ligaments in his right knee, and the future of him after that is still questionable. But the loss of him takes 17 points and six rebounds out of their lineup which is a season average so far. He has 10 points tonight. It's a big loss. Again, he has sprained knee ligaments in his right knee and will not return tonight. And his future after that is still questionable. Back to you. Thank you, Mark. And that is very unfortunate for Craig Snow. And as Bruce Weber said, I, I feel sorry for the kid, but I don't feel sorry for the situation because injuries are a part of the game. And Southern can't let the fact that he's not coming back spark Evansville and have somebody else step up for a big game here in the second half and overcome this 18-point deficit. So we'll see what happens. I think the first three or four minutes, I know Bruce Weber would echo this, are very key to this basketball game. If Evansville all of a sudden comes back and gets within 10 in the first four minutes, well, then we got a dogfight the rest of the way. If Southern can keep this advantage well into the double digits past the first timeout mark, then Southern can't put it on cruise control, but I think we'll be in control of the game. And they would be in good, uh, good shape, Mike. It'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments Evansville made at halftime, knowing that they're not going to have snow here in the second half. If they offensively adjusted, they were just kind of a little out of whack after he went out of the game. The Aces start with it. That's Keown. They go with Keown, Stanton, James, Hetty, and Adam Seitz. They're playing a very small lineup against the Salukis. Seitz with it up high. He walked oh. with a basketball turnover, number 16. Wow. Obviously looking to take it to the basket, was looking to go past Column on that one, maybe get it down low and dish. We'll never know because he walked with it. He shuffled both feet on the way to that bucket. Mills. <laughs> Threw up a crazy shot. He's lucky he didn't charge. And back come the aces. Need to be a little more in control, a little more relaxed and poised here in the second half. Stanton with the first two points here in the half. It's going to take a couple of buckets for Evansville's crowd to get back in the game. Williams, 4-3. Yeah, no! In and out, and it looked like the basket had a lid on at that time. Kent steals the ball, and he's fouled by Clint Keown. Great Boy. for Williams to get back on the defensive end. After he missed the shot, he get a little frustrated when you see one go in and out like that. Came back, good hustle, got good position, and got the steal. It went halfway down, didn't it? <laughs> I, thought it I thought it was in. Here's the steal by, and there's the undercut by Keown. So that was a very good call by Paul Jansen, the referee. Down low to Tillman. See where the double team comes from. It's out to Tanau now. Back down low to Derek. Working the two-man game. Derek has it stolen. Look at Seitz push it up the floor. And Colum steals it right back. Seitz got a little ahead of himself. The ball was too far out in front of him. Ricky just reached in and snatched it right away from him. Another turnover. 17 now for the Aces. Mills to Ricky. Southern has not scored, and Tanel travels with a ball. That's two turnovers in a row for them. 
Got to be a little more patient than Ricky Collins, the senior leader, saying, let's settle down, guys. Let's have a little poise. We got a good lead. Their big man's out. Let's take it to him. 18-26 to go in the half. Southern leads it by 16. It was 42-24 at half. Mayuzinovich blocked by Derek Tillman. Great position by Tillman right there. Didn't let him get underneath him. Didn't need to commit the foul. Shot clock's at 26. Big D with his second block of the game. He's got to get it in. Stolen. Another turnover. Up to Brandon Mells, who lays it in. Mells with five. Southern up by 18. Mayuzinovich will bring it into the front court. On that last one, Mells anticipated a steal. Released early. Got the easy layup bucket. So the dogs have weathered the first storm. James hasn't done anything in this game. Jumper, no good. Rebound, Tennell. Part of that's because of the good SIU defense on James. They're not allowing him to get good position on the block. And also, he's just not someone that scores big points for them. Colin with it. Brandon Mills into the lane. Gets it back out to Chris Tennell. Southern will use the shot clock. It's down to 17. Tennell, turn around, fouled, and it's good. Mayuzinovich hit Tanel on the elbow. He used the glass anyway and will try for a three-point play. Little smirk on Tanel's face, but he was able to stay in control, get a good adjustment while in the air, and you'll see it right here. Kisses it right off the glass. Boom. In for two. Southern leads by 20 and can make it 21 if Tanel can hit the free throw here. It's Southern's first free throw of the game, and no better person could be at the line than Tanel, who shoots at a 77% clip. Bingo. 21 point lead for the Dogs, their biggest of the game. Cross in, Tanell out. Kyle Runyon's into the game for Evansville. Nice to see Tanell convert. Let's hope we don't get into a foul fest here, but it's good to get those early free throws now when they're not mattering as much. If the pressure one comes later, you'll have the confidence to make them. Heady with it. Hounded by Joshua Cross to Runyon. Turn around, good. Kyle Runyon is a player who, if he gets hot, is unconsciously hot. Nice shot by Runyon, and he's one of those players that's not afraid to take the three-pointer either. Abel Schroeder with it. Two cross. Down low to Tillman. Double team is on. Bounce it to Schroeder. Good. Great pass inside Tillman to Schroeder. Great pass by Tillman to Schroeder. He had good position, was able to adjust in the air, get the layup after he got around his man. Runyon traveled with a basketball. 18th turnover for the Aces. 18 turnovers for Evansville, three this half unofficially, and they average 13 turnovers. Here's Runyon out high. See the double step there with his left foot. They actually called a foul on that, Mike. They said he gave him the elbow as he came around the screen oh my to get open, so he, he actually both. fouled him before. Yeah, he did Still both. a turnover. Either way, it's a turnover, but they're going to call a foul on Runyon. His second. Dogs lead it by 21. Evansville was blown out at Southwest the other night, and they're on the verge of getting it blown out again. And there's a foul inside, and Joshua Cross will go to the free throw line. Hetty called for that foul, his second. First, rather, on Hetty. Oh, excuse me, his third. Picked one up when I wasn't looking. Cross will shoot two. Joshua, 54% from the line. Something he needs to work on, especially, down. <laughs> especially for as much as he likes to go to the basket. He's that slashing type player. He collects a lot of fouls. Something that will hopefully improve as the season goes on as we get closer to the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Missed them both. Stanton to the wing and Sites hits the three. Can't leave somebody open on the wing on any team, no matter who you're playing, no matter how big the lead is. If you leave somebody open in college basketball, they can knock the three-pointers down. Well, they are hounding Kent Williams. Schroeder with it. Column. 17 on the shot clock. Southern leads it by 18. It's what it was at halftime, an 18-point lead. Over to Schroeder. Abel for three. Yes, Abel Schroeder nails the three, and Southern's back up by 21. Oh, a big shot with a shot clock winding down. Great look by Schroeder. Looked, looked his man right in the eye. Raised up above him, knocked the three-pointer down. Runyon, foul on 
Derek Tillman, he knew it right away as soon as he couldn't get his feet in front of Kyle Runyon. Derek Tillman commits the personal foul. For Derek, that is his first of the game, and there's a little shove out of bounds. But we've come to the first media timeout of the second half, and it's all dogs. They led it by 18 and a half. They've increased the lead to 21. It's 52-31. We will be back. And the dogs are leading at 52 to 31. I'm Mike Trude. Mark Carlson and Matt Judkins are alongside. And Here's the replay of Brandon Mel's layup earlier in the half to give Southern again a 20 point lead and they're up by 21. Want to give you that address again for the Missouri Valley Conference ticket giveaway. We have two pairs of tickets to give away and you can send a self-addressed stamped envelope with your name, address and phone number to the following address. Basketball, WSIU TV, Southern Illinois University, Communications Building, 1048. Carbondale, Illinois, 62901-6602. Entries must be postmarked by February 10th of this year. Again, basketball, WSIU-TV, SIU Communications Building, Carbondale, 62901. There's Derek with a little bit of shove against Kyle Runyon, his first personal foul. So Evansville will have the basketball, 15.38 to go. And Southern now wants to play hard for the next three and a half minutes and play this game a timeout at a time and try to keep that double digit lead. Runyon. In and out. That's how Kent Williams three did earlier. And they're going to take some chances on threes now. Tanel. Show some poise here as we get deeper into the second half with a big lead. Work some clock, get a good shot, maybe pound it down low. I'll wait for the open man on the outside. Triple teamed is Jermaine Deerman. Colin with it. 10 on the shot clock. Tanell. 4-3. No, too strong. And Southern gets the rebound. And they get another full shot clock. And Bruce Weber says, use it. Run the motion. And that's Colin. why you like having a guy like Ricky Collin in the ballgame, because he's able to settle the team down right for something like that happens. They get an offensive rebound. Mills. No. Schroeder. Oh, he had it. Then he just missed it. Back comes Evansville. Sights with it. Runyon in the corner. Stanton ready to pull the trigger on the three. Can't now. Baseline jumper, no. Rebound. All Schroeder fouled from behind by Mayuzinovic. Good position on the defensive, ba uh, defensive boards by SIU. They had Tanell and Schroeder right there. No way Evansville is going to get a rebound there. Second foul on Farouk Mayuzinovic. And the dogs will take it out underneath. 14-31 left to go in the ballgame. Little token half court pressure here. Full court pressure, I should say, by Evansville. Nothing to pick up the intensity too much, despite being down by 21. Bounce it into Deerman. Nice spin move over Majuzinovic for two. Great move inside. The Dogs lead it by 23. It's always fun to watch Jer Jermaine Deerman down low on the block when he gets the ball like that. It's almost like he smells the basket and it goes right up. For the Sites. Bucket. Right wing at Sites. Charge. Foul on Adam Sites. Great position by Chris Tunnell. And I don't think there was any question about that one. Tunnell just slid in and he waited for the man to come into him. Sites tried to get control of his body, wasn't able to knock Tunnell down. Tunnell draws a charge. Kent Williams back into the Saluki lineup, replacing Brandon Mills. There's the defense by Chris Tunnell. He goes down, Sites missed it. Southern had three guys around the backboards anyway. And the Salukis will inbound the ball. Schroeder to bring it up against Kyle Runyon. We were hoping the dogs would not have another performance like Indiana State. Well, they for sure have not. Schroeder slashes to the hoop for two more. He's got seven second half points. The dogs lead it by 25. More importantly, he hasn't committed a foul either. He's a little, playing a little more under control here in the second half. There's his fourth foul. Just as you said it, he commits foul number four. Run, Runyon knew he had three, and here's the drive right now. Pick it up. He had him beat right there, and Abel tried to close with his arm, and the foul was right there. He got him, and Trout is a contact player. He doesn't mind getting the contact. He likes to drive to the bucket, likes to play good, strong man defense just like that. Not afraid to take it. Brandon Mills comes back in for Abel. 
Runyon posting up on Collum, knocked away by Tennell. Look at Mells go to the hoop. Scores. The, the quickness of Brandon Mells out into transition. They were, despite having two men on defense, they were unable to contain him as he went to the hole. 27 point lead. Folks, you won't believe this. In the last two games alone, the Salukis have outscored Evansville 162 to 112. That's a 50 point differential. The score tonight is another 27. That's 77 point differential. The last two and a half games, Southern has outscored the Aces. We talked at the top, Mike. We didn't think SIU would be able to get a big lead here at Evansville, but they've been able to. And now Chris Tunnell just knocks down another three-pointer. It's a 30-point lead. And Jim Cruz has to call a timeout. It is a 30. 30-point 30 lead, 32nd timeout. And Evansville's basically, I won't say they've quit, but they're not checking shots. They're not doing anything to get back in this basketball And it's almost game. like they don't know what to do without Craig Snow in there. Boy, you don't know just what kind of an integral part of a team one player can be until he actually goes out like that. Kent Williams has not scored a point this half, but Schroeder has picked up with seven. Tillman, or excuse me, Tunnell has scored six in this half, and Brandon Mells has scored four. So different guys are picking up the uh, offense for the Salukis. Here's Tunnell's last three-pointer, nothing but the bottom of the net. And Southern is shooting the lights out tonight. As we mentioned at halftime, Southern was shooting 55%, and I know they've upped that here in the second half. Definitely. Doesn't seem like they're missing much and they're taking a lot better care of the ball on the offensive end than they did the first two or three minutes of, the, of this second half. Bruce Weber likes what he sees in this one. Southern going for its third straight win after beating Bradley and Drake at home. They've come on the road and they've thus far embarrassed the Evansville Aces here in their home court. Heading Fans, from 18. Fans here are just silent, Mike. They're, they're stunned. They didn't expect SIU to come into their arena and get up by 30 at any point in this game. They've won 14 games in a row here at this place. Deerman down low on James, spins, scores. Jermaine Deerman schools the senior. He's got four. He smelled the basket, he oh. went right for it. He has no fear when he gets down low on the block. Six, eight freshman from it. Look at people are getting up behind us and leaving already. Runyon over Tunnell. Good, nice running one-hander. Nice running one-hander Runyon. by Runyon. Good by Tunnell not to commit a foul there. 11.54, clock running. Mills back to Tunnell, wide open for three. Yes, Chris Tunnell, nobody's guarding him. You'd like to see it take a lot of time off the clock, but if they're going to give you an open three and you're hot, you might as well take it and hit it. It's a 33-point lead for Southern. Stanton, he traveled, no call. Keown misses, rebound Tunnell. Salukis were looking to push the ball up quickly. Now they're getting to their offense, get set. And Chris Tunnell is going to be called for a hooking foul against Chuck Hetty. For Chris, that's just his second foul. It's only the third team foul against the Dogs here in the second half, so we're in no danger for sending this one to a free throw contest. And we've come to our second media timeout of the second half. The Salukis lead it by a score of 66 to 33. We'll be back after this. Back at Roberts Stadium, the score is Southern Illinois 66, Evansville 33. Mark Carlson, there's some new rules this year for the referees, huh? That's right, Mike. Yesterday, the NCAA instituted a new rule to assist referees in game-winning situations. Now, the new rule says that the game is being televised. A referee has the option of going to look at a replay to determine a final call in a game-winning or game-tying situation at the end of regulation or overtime. And you know what that means? It puts a little more pressure on our guys back in the production truck. But obviously, SIU right now doesn't have to worry about any of those calls having to be made tonight. Back to you guys. Not with a 33-point lead, though our guys in the truck do a fabulous job. And this is our last game we're bringing to you this year. And we could always use some help funding these basketball games. Mike, we can always use that help. And if anyone out there today wants to call in and donate, I know a lot of people are at home watching today with the snow, you can always call 1-800-745-9748 to make a donation. As you see, Josh Cross goes strong to the hole. And Williams got away with taking about four steps on that play without a call, but he'll get the assist. And there's a foul. It's going to be on Brad Korn or Kent Williams. 
It's on Kent Williams. His first foul. And again, Kent hasn't scored here in the second half. Jim, Jim Cruz obviously said, don't let him beat us. But everybody else is. Runyon. Nice pass to Kwame James. Oh, look at that grip. And Korn tipped it in. See who they give the basket to. They gave it to Mayu Zinovich. So the dogs are scoring for everybody, themselves and for the aces. It's 68-35. Mike, sometimes when you have a key player go down, you expect your, your upperclassmen to step up. They've only got one senior, that's Kwame James. And judging by the last shot he took, he's really not the player you expect to st step up on the offensive end. And that was the worst pass of the game by the Salukis. And Seitz gets the layup. And Southern turns it over again. It's a 31-point lead, so it's no means to panic. They just got to get back in the game, and Cross was the victim of both of those turnovers. And Josh has got to get his head back in the game. Derek Tillman just gave him a rap on the noggin and said, let's go. Even with 10 minutes left, you don't want to let up at all and even give them the slightest hope of getting back in the ball game. Runyon misses the three. And Southern can take its time now, run some clock. Cross with it. There's nobody near him. He doesn't even have to get rid of the basketball. Shot clock down to 15. Williams with it on sights. Nice crossover. Kent, jumper good. First two points of the half. He's got 17. Lead back up to 33. Such a nice shot when he raises up and extends that arm and just kind of lets it just float right into the basket. That's a great scorer's touch from Kent Williams. Keown. Nice back door to Kwame James, but he stepped out of bounds. Another turnover for the Aces, and it goes back over to the Salukis. Chuck Hetty's going to come into the game, and my guess is he's coming in for Kwame James. Here's the replay. Don't know if we can see the baseline. There it is. And must have been his left foot, Mike. Left foot was on the line. Paul Jansen, the referee, was right there, so I'm sure he did. And Bruce Weber says, run some clock. Southern can get it under nine minutes. Column with it to Kent Williams. To Josh Cross, back to Ricky Collins. Short jump shot is good. Ricky hits the two-pointer. Just about an inch away from the three-pointer. He's right on the line. I see Ricky knock that shot down, though. Keown. Right wing and Stone King into the game now. Keon, leaner, good. Keon hits it, his first two points of the game. He got the start tonight. He only started six games prior to this. Interesting to see he's only got two points now here this late in the second half. Came in averaging nine per game, though, so he's been good. And Stone King just ripped it right away from Brad Korn. And he misses the jump shot. And Korn fouls Hetty. Maybe a foul out of frustration. He got back, got good position down low. Wasn't able to get the rebound. Hacked the, hacked the man as he went back up for the basket. And you'll see it right here. Got him on the, it looked like he got a pretty good piece of the ball. They're going to call that nine times out of 10, though. And Abel Schroeder will check back into the game next opportunity as Chuck Hetty will go to the free throw line and shoot two. He's a 70%er on the year. Knocks it down. Chuck Hetty with five points. Schroeder in. Williams sits down. Stanton back in for Adam Seitz. And when you've only got a nine-man rotation, and now that Craig Snow's out, it's only an eight-man rotation, those substitutes get plenty tired, especially they have to press all over the court now against Southern. Hetty missed the second one. Interesting that they haven't picked up that intensity that much on the SIU side of the basketball court, they're kind of letting him get into their half-court offense and then really Abel put Abel Schroeder. Probably not a very good three. Two seconds, you know, a little less than 10 seconds off the shot clock. Southern's going to win this game as long as they just take care of the clock. Definitely. You'd like to see him take at least 20 seconds each time down the floor unless you got a wide-open three, which he didn't have there. Must have felt it a little bit, thought he had a good shot, but unfortunately didn't go down, and then Derek Tillman knocked it out of bounds. 72-40. Keon. To the hoop. Yes, nice play by Clint Keon. Nice running floater in the lane. Keon's got four. Somebody's got to come to the basketball for Southern. Schroeder down to Tillman. Derek lost it. Can't find it. Jump ball. No, he got a timeout. Derek called the timeout. 
So we got a 30 second timeout and heads up play by Derek Tillman getting the timeout. Southern still will have 19 seconds on the shot clock to get a good shot off. And they're playing it very well. And we'll see the scramble underneath the basket, I think, coming up there. Derek is yelling, timeout. You can see his lips going, timeout, timeout, timeout. And he got the timeout. Referee. Even though he was probably tied up on the play, the ball would have gone back to Southern anyway. So he accomplished two things there. Southern keeps possession. And Bruce Weber can just diagram a play during the 30-second uh, timeout. And even Bruce Weber looks relaxed right now as we get another angle from the tie-up. And then the timeout by Tillman. You can't really see him calling for the timeout there, but the referees were right on top of him. He's able to give him the signal, get it over to the bench. That was Mark McMullen, the referee underneath, who called that one. And Southern will inbound it underneath the basket, leading by 30. We're ahead of just ahead of a media timeout at 72-42. Next play stoppage, there will be a media timeout. Williams top of the key. Over to Collin. Here comes Abel Schrader on a double pick. Abel slashes into the short air ball. Looked like he might have expected to get a little contact as he rolls up for that shot. Didn't get the contact, put the ball up a little short. 30 point lead for Southern. It was 18 at half. Stone King hits a two. Comes in off the bench, gets a quick jumper, knocks it down. He palmed the ball, another turnover for Abel. Something you're seeing referees call a lot more this year in college basketball. They still let a lot of pro players get away with it, but something referees were told prior to the season. Let's look at that a little bit more. 72-44 is the score. 7-0-7 left to go in the ballgame. Southern leads it by 28. We'll be back. The Salukis lead it by a score of 72 to 44. Mark McMullen, one of the referees, worked the Saluki Evansville game back in Carbondale. Here's the pass by Ted Williams, the look away pass to Joshua Cross for the layup. Mark McMullen worked the game that Southern won in Carbondale by 31 points. And we were talking with him before the game, and of course, we did not expect this kind of a game from the Salukis leading it by 28. And Mark just walked over and gave us a look like, whoo, can you believe this game? I mean, he's, he's seen two Southern blowouts over Evansville this year. And as we said, folks, Evansville has a 14-game winning streak in this building. And people are leaving in droves right now with 7.07 to go as the Dogs lead it by 28. We talked about their last loss being a blowout against Southwest Missouri State. You know, they were 11, since that loss to SIU, they had gone 11 and 2, and they were 11 and 1 prior to that Southwest blowout. Salukis have picked up the intensity on defense. Muzinovich just throws up a prayer. That was a horrible shot. Definitely not his shot. Not his position on the court to be that far away from the basket and have to put it on the floor and take a jumper. Salukis need to work clock, take 20 to 25 seconds off every time, and then get a good shot. Dearman. Of course, that's about everybody's success. What they'd like to do. Williams, wide open from the corner, drains the three. Kent's got 20. His career high is 22. Stanton to the hoop. Stripped, oh, but a foul on Ricky Collin. Ricky tried to reach in and strip it from Jeremy Stanton. It's only the sixth team foul, so he will not be at the free throw line. Collin's first foul of the basketball game. 6.15 left, neither team is in the bonus yet, so keeps the pace of the game going a little quicker. Yeah, now Southern can work the clock under six minutes the next time it has the ball. Evansville may do it for us on this possession. Stone King with it to the corner and Hetty. SIU still having that good denial down on the defensive end. They're not letting them get, get the ball down low on the block for an easy bucket. A nice feed to Keon. As I say it, they get the layup. But the Salukis don't want to foul here. So if a guy's got a lane to the hoop, they're going to go ahead and give it to him instead of giving him a three-point play and stopping the clock. They'll just go ahead and let him take the shot, get their two points, and run clock on the other end. We're under 5.45 in the ball game. It's a 29-point lead. Now Mels will take it and run the shot clock down, and Southern will try to get a decent shot. If you watch SIU on the offensive end, they run that motion offense, but right now it's kind of a delayed motion where the guys away from the ball are waiting until inside Dear 10 man. seconds. Dearman! Good enough foul! How about Jermaine Dearman? He's chuckling right now with Kent Williams and Ricky Collum. 
that he's an athletic it. player, Mike. He gets it down low. He likes to try the, the moves like that, do the little trick shots and things like that. And he got the basket to fall after the foul. Lead is back up to 31, and Lance Brown is going to check into the game with 522 to go. Here's the move by Jermaine. <laughs> the alley-oop, and it hung on the rim and fell. And Jermaine's going to go to the free throw line where he is only shooting 38% on the season. And those woes continue. And that's why. Stanton with it now. Again, Craig Snow went out of this game early in the first half. How about that not going in? Milyuzinovic gets the, the follow. He's got six points. Snow went out early in this ball game and has sprained knee ligaments. His status for the rest of the season right now is up in the air. Nice to see the other senior, Lance Brown, getting into the ball game. Usually this is right about the time that SIU's got a comfortable lead. He gets to get some good minutes, some quality minutes. Maybe he'll get a couple points here towards the end of the ball game. Clock is under five minutes to go. Shot clock is at 10. To Brown, shot clock at five. Oh, it was a nice look pass. Just didn't connect, and Keon inside Hetty goes off of Tanell out of bounds. And good, de good defense, Evans, Mike. We'll keep it. Good defense by Tanell, able to run back down on the floor. Was still hustling this late in the ball game, up by 29 points. Cross in for Tanell. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Schroeder's going to come back in for Kent Williams. Underneath the basket, that is Stone King who will trigger it for the Aces. Oh, Brandon Mills almost had the steal. Keon, no good. Brandon knocked out of bounds off of who? Off of Brandon. Looks like it went up. Mills dove for the ball. Looked like it rolled right off his knee. Hit the, hit the floor pretty hard, as you'll see it here. He goes flying into the Evansville bench. Nice of the players over there to catch him a little bit and break his fall. Good call. 34, new shot clock now for the Aces. Saluki's lead it by 29. He just traveled with a basketball. No call. Clock approaching four minutes. Stone King. Runyon, back to Stone King. Shot clock at 15, and Stone King just pushes off. No call. Keon. Misses, Stone King gets the rebound. Mike, there's a lot of battling going down, down low. Abel Schroeder, Lance Brown, Chuck Hetty for Evansville. They're going at each other a little bit. Let's watch and see what the referee does next time SIU is on the defensive end of the floor. So the Salukis are going to go to 12 and 8 on the year, 6 and 3, and be alone for the time being in second place, depending on the outcomes of some other games tonight in the Missouri Valley Conference. Schroeder slashes, dishes to Brown. Lance, jumper, good! Lance Brown hits two. Everybody's scoring for the dogs. Nice reward for Lance to get into the game, like I said earlier. He worked so hard at practice, puts in quality minutes for Bruce Weber day in and day out. Nice to get him some significant minutes at the end of the game in a winning effort. Abel Schroeder just fouled out of the basketball game. Abel finishes with seven points. And that's okay, because the dogs lead it by 29. It's 79 to 50. Brad Korn comes in for Abel Schroeder. And to the free throw line will be Kyle Runyon. Runyon will shoot two. He's a 74% free throw shooter. Kyle's got five points, all of them here in the second half. Evansville's gonna drop now to six and four and lost both games to the Salukis this year by whopping margins. And I think when you look at the schedule at the beginning of the year, sometimes you almost subconsciously chalk one of those games up as a loss. Great for SIU to get the sweep. Runyon hit them both. He brings his team back to within 27. This one's almost over. Southern leads at 79-52. We'll be back. 79-52, the only thing remaining to see at this one is the final scores. The Salukis are gonna get a win. Here's Lance Brown hitting a jumper from the outside. 
Perfect form. That's the form that made him the Southern Illinois Play of the Year his senior year at West Frankfort High School. Lance has paid his dues with the Salukis. He's more than happy to get a little over five minutes of playing time. Definitely, you can see the big smile on his face, and it's great to see players like that that give the effort day in and day out, like I said earlier. You know, sometimes you wonder about making these road trips with the tough weather, Mike. It's been, a, you know, just a pleasure working with you. Unfortunately, this is our last road trip of the year for WSIU WSI. But I just wanted to say thank you to you for being a great colleague and a great play-by-play uh, -play announcer for SIU and all the people that work hard, so hard in the truck and back in the studio in Carbondale. It has been fun, and we do a special appreciation for Bob Garrig, the general manager of WSIU TV, who is graciously allowed six games to be broadcast this year. Robert Henderson for his hard work on the satellite and all the arrangements to get these babies on the air and Roger Susky for manning the, uh, the fort on all of our trips and Mike Vendel for his work on the technical side of things as Joshua Cross nails the short jump shot inside. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Well, they've all done a wonderful job, and they've given me a great opportunity to team with you this year and see some exciting games. A couple disappointing losses we've televised, but two great wins over Evansville. Sound technician Dave was big time all year. We didn't always have the best equipment, but we, you know, with Band-Aids, you can do wonders. And uh, sometimes this year we worked with some Band-Aids to get some things on the air. Let's see the replay inside on the move inside by Hetty. Foul called on Jermaine Dearman, and Hetty will shoot two free throws. Here's another look at it in Jermaine, yeah, maybe a little bit with the body. Looks like he had pretty good position, but got him on just on the other side. Hetty hits the free throw. 28 point lead. Again, it was an 18 point lead at halftime. Jason Ward into the game for the Salukis, replacing Joshua Cross. And Josh had eight points tonight. Hetty makes them both. He's got seven. David Carney bringing the ball up for the Salukis as well. Chris Drew about to check in and we'll have the all newcomer team on the uh, floor for the Salukis for the final two minutes. Hope to have some interviews following the basketball game. Mark Carlson is gonna try to arrange interviews with a couple of the seniors, Tanell and Tillman. Jason Ward misses the jump shot. Had a pretty good look at the basket, saw it. Decided he wanted to get in the scoring column as well. Didn't quite go down for him. Stone King has it. Runyon, NBA three, short. And Brown comes down with the board for the Salukis. We're under, two minutes to go. Corn back to Deerman. Great Jermaine. recognition by Corn to notice that he didn't have anything. Gave a quick little touch pass to Deerman. Deerman tried to drive to the basket, didn't quite get it there. Now got to scramble on the floor for the ball. And jump ball is the call, and I think possession goes to the Salukis, and it does with 19 on the shot clock. And let's see the battle for the first down. And there's the tie-up, and look at Korn, the freshman battling in there with Mayuzinovic. Chris Drew into the game, Deerman sits down. Great to see enthusiasm by the freshman, even though pretty much the game is in hand. Out to Chris Drew, 17 on the shot clock. Jason Ward again, pull up jump shot. No, Jason short again. A good look and he just didn't have enough leg on it. Didn't quite get to the basket, pulled up a little bit short. Looked like he had good form. He was right in line with the basket, just didn't get in there and get it go down. Ball goes back to the Salukis. Mayuzinovic could not handle it out of bounds. And Southern leads it by 27 with a minute nine to go in the basketball game. And this has been fun tonight. Compared to the Indiana State game, when we had to bring out Indiana State's media guy to provide some facts. This one is a lot of fun. Like and I said, Mike, I'd make these road trips if I could get a Salukis victory anytime in any kind of weather. Carney dishes back to Chris Drew for three. No, that one really wasn't close either. Keon penetrates all the way to the hoop. Misses. Hetty got fouled from behind. Majuzinovic scores and is fouled by Jason Ward. Majuzinovic now with eight points, six of them in the second half. Kept himself under control as he went up toward the basket. Now he's going to go to the line for a three, three-pointer as you see it right there. Nice little touch right off the glass. The Saluki fans have made their way down almost to the bench. And they're doing the SIU chant behind the Saluki bench as Chris Drew gets the rebound. 
30 seconds left in this one. Drew <laughs> feigned on the long three point attempt. Lance Brown. Bounce to Jason Ward, reverse block nicely by Maya Zinovich. They've tried like the Dickens to get Jason two points. Nice feed by Lance Brown to see him open down on the baseline, just wasn't able to convert quick enough. Stone King nails the tray. He's got seven, and the mild applause from the 2,000 or so people that are still here as the clock runs down. Three, two, one, and the Salukis have a major victory tonight over the Evansville Aces. 81 to 59 the score led by Kent Williams is 20 points. Southern is now six and three in Missouri Valley Conference play and 12 and eight overall. The Aces drop to six and four and 15 and six and Southern never let this game get away from them. They opened the game with a three pointer. They never ever trailed in the basketball game. You know what Mike we talked we've talked time and time again you and I about other teams getting runs on SIU. They staved off Evansville's early run when they were up 13 to four and from then on it was all SIU. They didn't let them get back in the ball game and they never got that sense that Evansville ever had the chance to get back in the ball game. It was 42 24 at halftime and Bruce Weber said right before half the first four or five minutes of the second half were key if they can maintain the lead of 15 16 17 points not let Evansville creep back into within 10 and make it a game then they'd be OK and it's exactly what they did and they win the basketball game 81 to 59 and Mark Carlson has a couple of happy seniors with him Chris Tunnell and Derek Tillman Mark go ahead went at Evansville how's it feel to get this victory out of the way it feels good I, I know the last two years we haven't won we came very close but this year we we set our goals to win here we wanted to win here real bad I, we know in the conference we want to win so we came out and played hard and, and this is what happened you guys did play hard and you guys got the series sweep the first time against Evansville since they've joined the Missouri Valley. What did you guys do right all season to get to both these victories? I mean, it feels, it feels good to beat them because they're a great team. I mean, you see all the banners around here and we just worked hard. We're going to try to beat everybody as bad as we can. So we're just going to come out and just work hard as we can. And tonight we did that and we played good on defense and therefore we scored a lot of points. Was the difference maker when Snow went out of the game? Is that when you guys really started picking it up? No, I think we was going to pick it up anyway. I mean, when he went out, I mean, that wasn't good for them. But we, we just had to come out and play hard. I mean, with him in or with him out, we knew we had to win this game right here. All right, congratulations, Derek. See you later. Chris, you guys won the first game of a road swing here at Evansville tonight. Now you guys go to Northern Iowa and Drake. How good of an opportunity is this for you guys to move up and keep a hold of second well, place? Well, this is what we set our goals after Indiana State. We were very disappointed. We said Bradley and Drake, we came in here in the locker room and said we play like that. Uh, tonight, you know, we might come out and win. Uh, I mean, it was a tough game. I mean, Craig Snow got hurt, and uh, I mean, he's a great player, and it was sad to see that. But, I mean, I mean, it's still a game of basketball, and we want to win. So, uh, but Evansville's a good team. Looking ahead to Northern Iowa and Drake, both on the road the next few games, both games you lost last year. Right. What are you guys doing right this year to win those games? Well, we're going to go back and look at game tape from last year. And uh, we know that we can beat them because we beat them at home. And it's just, this is the most important road trip of the year because uh, it's a long one. But we know we have to come out and win these two to, to stay in uh, contention for the Valley. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Congratulations. All right, guys, we'll send it back to you. Chris Tunnell had 13 points tonight. He had nine second half points. And Derek Tillman got all nine of his points in the first half tonight. But the senior tandem, along with Ricky Kahn, who chip, chipped in with nine points as well, that's 31 points out of the Salukis, 81 points. Here's some replays from this ball game. This is Brandon Mills in the second half when Southern got out to a, a big, big lead in the basketball game. Now Chris Tunnell nails three of his 13 points and Southern had so many open looks at the basket tonight. It's you know that's a product of your good defense. You get out on the basketball court and you run a little bit. You create lanes for yourself. You penetrate a little bit dish back out but you've got to knock those shots down and SIU was able to do that tonight. Joshua Cross two straight nice feeds on the inside kisses it off the glass for two points and what a real real nice victory for the Salukis tonight. 81 to 59 was the final score and I don't know what else they could have done tonight. They did almost everything fantastically. 81 to 59 was the final score. We will come back and wrap things up when we come back after this. 
Yes, they don't want that ball. 81-59 <laughs> was the final score here tonight. The Salukis humiliating the Evansville Aces for the second time this year. Southern won by 31 points in Carbondale, 82 to 51. They win this one 81 to 59. So that's another 22-point victory. Southern had outscored these guys by 50 points coming into tonight's game in the last two games, and now they outscored them by 22 again. They've just done some phenomenal things against this Evansville ball club, and Southern matches up very well with this team, although without Craig Snow, it's a little bit of a struggle for Evansville to get things going, but a real, real nice team victory, and they did everything they had to do. They never, ever let Evansville have a lead in this game. We, we talked about the keys at the beginning of the ball game. Josh Cross coming in off the bench was able to add some points, as was Abel Schroeder. They were able to stop Snow. He had 10 points before he went out, so SIU didn't have to worry about him in the second half. You, talk, you take those key things, they did that. They were able to convert on their offensive end of the floor as well. Again, this was our final broadcast of the uh, year, bringing you Saluki basketball on WSIU Channel 8. And we can always use your help for funding for these basketball games. Go ahead, give us the telephone number, Matt. That number one, once again, is 1-800-745-9748. So if anyone out there would like to make a donation, there'll be someone back at the studio willing to take your calls and take those pledges so we can bring you some more basketball games next year. Don't forget the Missouri Valley Conference ticket giveaway going on. You can write to basketball, self a self-addressed stamped envelope with your name, address, and phone number to Saluki Basketball, WSIU-TV Communications Building, Carbondale, Illinois, 62901. And that... We will be giving away two pairs of tickets. They must be postmarked by February 10th in order to win the two pairs of tickets to the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. They are all session tickets for the men's tournament in St. Louis. Southern wins it by a score of 81 to 59 this evening. Let's go down some of the final statistics. The Salukis for the game shot 57%. Evansville for the game shot 49%. Southern was out rebounded 31 to 24, but the big, huge difference was in the turnovers. 25 turnovers for the Evansville Aces, only 13 for the Salukis. And Evansville only took 49 shots in the game. Southern took 12 more shots and hit 11 more field goals than did the Evansville Aces. And Southern just played superbly, now goes on the road for two, and as Chris Tennell said, two very important games. Very important games, and they're gonna have to be sharp in all facets, all facets of the game just as they were here today. All right, the final score tonight from Evansville was the Salukis 81, the Evansville Aces 59. For Mark Carlson and Matt Judkins and all of our crew, we thank you for watching this year. I'm Mike Trude. So long, everyone. <laughs>